Good morning, everyone. I am so thrilled that you are here with us for some reading time. Now, I know that we have a special holiday coming up this weekend. Do you guys know what holiday it is? That's right, it's Mother's Day. So for today's stories, I picked three of our family favorites. These are books that my kids love. One is a story that my son loved when he was just a little tiny boy. Even though it has lots of C words and makes my tongue get all tied, he loves C is for clown. This is a story by Jan and Stan Berenstein. So we're going to read C is for clown. Now you got to laugh with me if I mess up on these words because guess what? It is a tongue twister. We have C is for clown, a circus of C words. Clown. Clarence Clown. Cats carrying canes. Can Clarence Clown catch cats carrying canes? I wonder, can he do it? Clarence Clown catches cats carrying canes. Collies carrying clubs. Cats carrying canes catch collies carrying clubs. Look how they're getting piled up there. <laughs> Clarence Clown carrying cats carrying canes and collies carrying clubs. Cows carrying cakes and candles. Well, that would be so strange to see, wouldn't it? A cow carrying a cake and a candle. Collies carrying clubs catch cows carrying cakes and candles. That one almost got me, didn't it? Can Clarence Clown carry cats carrying canes and collies carrying clubs and cows carrying cakes and candles? What do you think? Can he do it? Yes, Clarence Clown can. Caroline Catfish. Oh, look how big she is. This has got to make them topple. Cows carrying, ca carrying cakes and candles catch Caroline Catfish. They did it. They caught her. Can Clarence Clown carry cats carrying canes and collies carrying clubs and cows carrying cakes and candles and Caroline Catfish? Clara Canary? Oh my, what happens if we can get her Carol Clara Canary on top? Crash! No, Clarence Clown can't. That was such a fun story. All of these words had the k sound at the beginning. Cane, clown, cats, candles. This has been one of our favorite stories as my, for my kids growing up. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this story as much as my kiddos do. Let's see, one of my favorites right now, we're reading a lot of the old woman stories. Have you guys ever heard that? Like there was an old woman who swallowed a fly? I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Well, guess what? There are lots and lots of stories just like that of the old woman. So this is one that starts, usually it's at the beginning of the school year, but it's one of our family favorites. My kids really, really love reading There Was an Old Woman books right now. So since it's a day where we're looking at books and it's some of our favorites, we have there was an old woman who swallowed some books. Let's see. This book is by Lucille Colorandro. I want you to look at all the pictures too. See what happens in the background. Remember, we can look at the pictures to get more of the story, can't we? There was an old lady who swallowed some books. I don't know why she swallowed those books, but she didn't get any looks. She didn't get any strange looks. Would you think that someone would look at you a little strangely if you ate some books? I know I would. There was an old lady who swallowed a pen. She was happy again when she swallowed that pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books, but I don't know why she swallowed the books. She didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed a pencil case. Without leaving a trace, she swallowed that pencil case. 
She swallowed the pencil case to hold the pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books. I don't know why she swallowed the books. But she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed a ruler. She couldn't look cooler swallowing that ruler. Does she look cool to you? I like her glasses. She swallowed the ruler to measure the pencil case. She swallowed the pencil case to hold the pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books. I don't know why she swallowed the books, but she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed a folder. She didn't feel any older when she swallowed that folder. She swallowed the folder to protect the ruler. She swallowed the ruler to me measure the pencil case. She swallowed the pencil case to hold the pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books. Say it with me. I don't know why she swallowed the books, but she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed some chalk. She didn't balk when she swallowed some chalk. Look at this, this boy and that girl's face. They are very surprised that she swallowed the chalk. <laughs> I'd be very surprised too. She swallowed the chalk to decorate the folder. She swallowed the folder to protect the ruler. She swallowed the ruler to measure the pencil case. She swallowed the pen pencil case to hold the pen. She swallowed the pen to write in the books. I don't know why she swallowed the books but she didn't get any looks. There was an old lady who swallowed a bag. She didn't brag when she swallowed that bag. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen now. That's a big bag. The old lady didn't fuss when around the corner came a big yellow school bus. Did you see that bus and fuss rhyme? We have a lot of rhyming words in this book, don't we? She started to cheer that she could not hold back and out popped her brand new backpack. Have a great school year. So in that backpack were all of the things. Do you see all the things that she swallowed? The pen, the notebook, the chalk, the um, book bag, the pencil case, the ruler. You won't believe why this old lady swallowed some book pen, pencil case, ruler, folder, some chalk in a bag, we found out because she was going to school. We always need those school supplies, don't we guys? So I have one more story for you guys and I'll tell you this, my kids laugh so hard when we read this story. And I really love reading kids books with my kiddos because you know mothers and that's what we do. We love spending time with our babies. So this book is called Dog Breath, The Horrible Story with halitosis, and this is written by Dave Pilkey. Look for all the green, guys, because that green's telling you, oh, we has got some bad breath. There once was a dog named Hallie who lived with the Tosis family. Halitosis was a very good dog, but she had one big problem. Halitosis had horrible breath. Whenever Halitosis opened her mouth, horrible things came out. Look at the paint, the wallpaper peeling and the flower died, the fish died. Oh my goodness, even the painting does not like Halitosis' breath. When the children took Halitosis for a walk, everyone else walked on the other side of the street. Even skunks avoided Halitosis. Oh no, how stinky. But the real trouble started one day when Grandma Tosis stopped by for a cup of tea. And Hallie jumped up to say hello. Look at that stinky breath going right at Grandma. Oh no, poor Grandma. Mr. and Mrs. Tosis were not amused. Something has to be done about that smelly dog, they said. The next day, Mr. and Mrs. Tosis decided to find a new home for Hallie. The children knew that the only way they could save their dog was to get rid of her bad breath. So they took Hallie Tosis to the top of a mountain and that, that had a breathtaking view. They hoped that breathtaking view would take Hallie's breath away, huh, but it didn't. 
Next, the children took Hallie Tosis to a very exciting movie. They hoped that all the excitement would leave Hallie breathless. But it didn't. Finally, the children took Hallie Tosis to a carnival. They hoped that Carnival would lose her breath on that Hallie would lose her breath on the speedy roller coaster. Look, all of her stinky breath is going all over the people behind them. No, no, no. But that idea stunk too. The plans to change Hallie's bad breath had failed. Now, only a miracle could save Halitosis. Sadly, the three friends said goodnight, unaware that a miracle was just on the horizon. Later that night, when everyone was sound asleep, two sneaky burglars crept into the Tosa's house. The two burglars were tiptoeing through the dark and quiet rooms when suddenly they came upon Hallie Tosis. Yikes, whispered one burglar. It's a mean, big, mean, scary dog. Oh, don't be silly, whispered the ugly bur other burglar. That's only a cute little fuzzy puppy. The two burglars giggled at the sight of such a friendly little dog. That dog couldn't hurt a fly, whispered one burglar. Come here, poochie poochie, whispered the other. Oh, Halitosis came over and gave the burglars a nice big kiss. You guys know what's going to happen, don't you? The next morning, the Tosis family awoke to find two burglars passed out cold on the living room floor. It was a miracle. The Tosis family got a big reward for turning in the crooks, and soon Hallie Tosis was the most famous crime-fighting dog in the country. In the end, Mr. and Mrs. Tosis changed their minds about finding a new home for Hallie. For Hallie. They decided to keep their wonderful watchdog after all. Because life without Hallie Tosis just wouldn't make any sense. Oh my goodness, wasn't that such a fun story? Now, we have another friend of mine who's going to come and read you guys some stories, too. Okay? So hold on one second. Good morning, boys and girls. Wow, those were some great stories. I hope you enjoyed those as much as I did. Those were pretty funny. So as um, we mentioned earlier, um, this weekend is Mother's Day weekend. So I also brought some of my favorite books that my little boy has enjoyed um, reading as he's grown up. How many of you like to eat pancakes? I know we do. We enjoy making pancakes and waffles at home. But have you ever given a pig a pancake? How many of you, some of you might live on a farm also, and you might have pigs, but have you fed your pig a pancake? Let's see what happens if we give a pig a pancake. And this is written by Laura Numroff. If you give a pig a pancake. If you give a pig a pancake, she'll want some syrup to go with it. You'll give her some of your favorite maple syrup. She'll probably get all sticky so she'll want to take a bath. She'll ask you for some bubbles. When you give her the bubbles, she'll probably ask you for a toy. You'll have to find your rubber duck. The duck will remind her of the farm where she was born. She might feel homesick and want to visit her family. She'll want you to come too. She'll look through your closet for a suitcase. Then she'll look under your bed. When she's under the bed, she'll find your old tap shoes. She'll try them on. She'll probably need something special to wear with them. When she's all dressed, she'll ask for some music. You'll play your very best piano piece and she'll start dancing. What a silly pig. Then she'll want to take her picture. So you'll have to go get your camera. When she sees the picture, she'll ask you to take more. Then she'll want to send one to each of her friends. You'll have to give her some envelopes and stamps and take her to the mailbox. On the way, she'll see the tree in your backyard. She'll want to build a tree house. 
so you'll have to get her some wood, a hammer, and some nails. When the tree house is finished, she'll want to decorate it. She'll ask for wallpaper and glue. When she hangs the wallpaper, she'll get all sticky. Feeling sticky will, will remind her of your favorite maple syrup. She'll probably ask you for some more. And chances are, if she asks you for some syrup, what do you think she's going to want? She'll want a pancake to go with it. Wow, that makes me hungry. It makes me want to go home and make some pancakes for breakfast. Okay, our next story is Llama Llama Mother's Day present. And I'm just going to be reading from this book this morning. Um, and I want you to think about, do you have any plans this morning or this weekend actually to spend with your mom or maybe a grandmother or an aunt or someone that's really, really special for, um, to you? Let's see what Llama Llama does for um, his mom for Mother's Day. Llama Llama Mother's Day present. It is almost Mother's Day. All of Llama Llama's friends have made big plans to celebrate. Luna created a special card. Nellie planned a day outside. Gilroy is writing a song and Euclid is making an Eiffel Tower out of toothpicks. You all have such good ideas, Llama Llama says. I want to make my Mama's Mother's Day amazing too. He decides to make Mama a breakfast of all of her favorite foods and bring it to her in bed. His friends agree this is a great idea. Llama Llama visits his grandparents. They help him practice making and serving pancakes. Breakfast in bed, says Llama Llama, presenting the plate to Grandma. Mmm, Grandma says, taking a bite. Delicious. Llama Llama tells them about the rest of his Mother's Day plans. First, Mama and I will build a fort. Then we'll go on a slip and slide, make pizzas, go to the playground, and it will be so much fun, he says. Grandma laughs. She points out that those are Llama Llama's favorite things, not Mama's. Llama Llama needs to come up with a new plan. The next day, Llama Llama sees his friends at school. He tells them about his secret mission to find out things his mother likes. If I watch and listen very closely, he explains, I'll know exactly what Mama wants for Mother's Day. Like a spy, says Gilroy Goat. Llama Llama's teacher, Zelda Zebra, has a plan too. With Mother's Day coming up, she says, I have a class gift for us to create for your moms. She explains that they will be making a class quilt together with each student designing their own square. Llama Llama and his friends get to work. When Llama Llama gets home that day, he follows his mother around the house. He listens to everything she says and looks for clues as to what she would like for Mother's Day. Some cut flowers would look so lovely right here, she says. I do like paddle games and lemonade and gardening, she continues. I love pancakes, she exclaims on the phone. Pancakes, Llama Llama says to himself, I knew it. Now he has lots of ideas for Mother's Day. The night before Mother's Day, Llama Llama sits on his bed and looks at his long list of activities. He has planned so many of Mama's favorite things to do. That's it, he tells his stuffed Llama Fuzzy. Every minute is filled up. It will be a perfect Mother's Day for Mama. Hey, where is she? Llama wonders. Llama Llama decides to check on Mama. He hops out of bed and quietly tiptoes downstairs. He overhears his mother on the phone again. Actually, I don't have any Mother's Day plans at all, she tells Mama New. A low-key, relaxing Mother's Day sounds pretty perfect. It does? Gasped Llama Llama shocked. I'll be fine if we do nothing at all, Mama Mama continues. Llama Llama looks at his long list of activities. He doesn't know what to do. He crumples up his paper. The next day, Llama Llama sits at the kitchen table and colors with his stuffed llama. Remember, Fuzzy, he says, we can't make a big deal about Mother's Day. Mama Llama walks into the room with a big smile on her face. Good morning, my little llama, she says. Morning, says Llama Llama. 
Happy Mother's Day! Mama thinks Llama Llama is going to surprise her by making pancakes, but he just keeps on coloring instead. Mama, Mama, Mama Llama looks out the living room window. She watches Nellie and Mama Nu rollerblade down the street. She sees Luna give her mom a beautiful card. She hears Gilroy sing a special Mother's Day song. Looks like fun, says Llama Llama's mom. It does, replies Llama Llama, surprised. Mama, I had big plans too. He tells her what happened. Oh, Llama Llama, she replies, this is so sweet. I didn't know you had big plans for today. Mama Llama takes Llama Llama's hooves into her own. I'm a very lucky mama, she says. I love you, kiddo. I love you too, mama, Llama Llama replies. They share a big hug. Can we still do a few things on the list? Llama Llama asks. Mama Llama smiles and nods. Llama Llama jumps up and down. First, Llama Llama makes Mama breakfast in bed. Next, he brings her a big bouquet of flowers. Then, they swing together in the sunshine. There is still one more big Mother's Day surprise. Llama Llama and his mother meet all of their friends outside of school. Happy Mother's Day, everyone, Zelda Zebra says, welcoming them. I'm here to present a very special gift from your children. She unfolds the quilt to reveal all of the special squares made by her students. Llama Llama's square is right on top. This is so beautiful, Mama Llama explains. I love it. She gives Llama Llama a big hug. Mama and Llama Llama press their noses together. Thank you, little Llama, for the best Mother's Day ever, Mama says. Llama Llama beams proudly. The day had turned out to be perfect after all. So that is Llama Llama and his mama's Mother's Day weekend. So I hope that you spend your Mother's Day weekend celebrating the special person in your life. And maybe you can do some of the same activities that they did together. Now we have one more. And this is one of our favorites also. This is called You Are My I Love You by Marianne Cusimano. I am your parent, you are my child. I am your quiet place, you are my wild. I am your calm face, you are my giggle. I am your weight, you are my wiggle. I am your carriage ride, you are my king. I am your push, you are my swing. I am your audience, you are my clown. I am your London Bridge. You are my falling down. I am your carrot sticks. You are my licorice. I am your dandelion. You are my first wish. I am your water wings. You are my deep. I am your open arms. You are my running leap. I am your way home. You are my new path. I am your dry towel. You are my wet bath. I am your dinner, you are my chocolate cake. I am your bedtime, you are my wide awake. I am your finish line, you are my race. I am your praying hands, you are my saving grace. I am your favorite book, you are my new lines. I am your nightlight, you are my star shine. I am your lullaby, you are my peekaboo. I am your good night kiss, you are my I love you. Boys and girls, we hope you've enjoyed our stories that we had this morning. We hope you have a great rest of your Friday and a wonderful weekend. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there.